I've come here like, I don't know, maybe four or five times, and every time I come in, it's like, <laughs> like expanding wow. in all directions. Well, I'm breaking this wall down, and that's next. Just... So I heard the, the chorus hook, or the, that vocal that I ended up using, and I instantly was like, I, could, I already can hear what I need to do based around that hook. So I started the whole remix with that chorus hook. And then for the next year, year and a half after that, I was kind of doing a live DJ set. So I was DJing, which I had never done before in my life, but I was playing all my own tracks, but I was also playing live guitar, live vocals. But during my set, I would also drop that mix, and instantly, I mean, Russia, uh, you, you know, UK, obviously, Germany, any, anywhere I was in the world, people instantly were like, yeah! So, they, like, it resonated, you know, it resonated the instant they heard it, which is cool. I mean, and, and some of it comes down to taste, but I feel like, um, from what I saw, and you guys would know better, but it seems like even your own fans dug some of the remixes that run oh, that yeah, thing. They did, they did, they did. And my fan base really definitely well. did. I didn't, I didn't expect it to do that well. I was like, I don't know about this, and, you know, I was, I was a bit... I don't know, fuck it, we'll, we'll try it, but I don't know if it's gonna do well. It's, it's done really well, and I was just like, fuck, well, you know, there's, there's obviously, our fans cross over a lot. When we did the IC Star Tracks, and you, we were talking, and you were just, I could tell you were getting si excited about that genre of music, and like, at, you were asking me questions, and you want, wanted to hang out and stuff, and it, I thought it was a beautiful thing, because how, how that style of music can be twisted into what you're already doing, and how you can, it's like you, it's weird, it's like you almost took the whole metalcore genre, learned everything about it, and then put your own spin on it and put it into your songs. Even if that's not what actually happened, that's what it sounds like. That's good, yeah. that's good. I just I just knew I wanted to, I mean, I grew up on like Slayer. I mean, I grew up on like Exodus and Metallica and that kind of stuff, so I was like, I was a drummer, you know? It's like I wanted to be Dave Lombardo or, or uh, you know, Lars Ulrich or Charlie Benanti or somebody like that, and then like, hearing the stuff you were doing and hearing just the raw production because there was no programming in it. So I was filling in the blanks with what I knew I could do and just hearing the raw production, I was going, man, this is like, I didn't even think about this. This is like, I play guitar, that's what I do. You know, like I play all these different instruments, but I didn't think about producing something like that. So it really did open up my mind to the, the prospect of, of producing differently than I had been. It really kind of set the course of my new album, to be honest. It's, it's weirdly flattering because I look at what you do and you've got like, you know, gold records on your walls and everything else, and I'm, <laughs> and, and you know, it's it's kind of weird to hear somebody like you even. Now, I'm I'm just so used to kind of flying under the radar. I've just done what I've always done. I think your just your programming and like your sense of melody and stuff has always inspired me because you always have such a high bar. Like you set the bar so high, you know, and it just it's inspiring. I guess I don't know how to put it. It's like I listen to it and I'm like, how can I even get close to that. It just sounds like it's leagues of far, you know, leagues so far from sitting down at a, at a, a keyboard with a patch and playing a chord is one thing. And then when you listen to what you do, it's like 10,000 years after that. It's, it's funny because when we were coming today, just yesterday, he, he was like, I, I emailed your record label days ago asking for all your albums. I was like, they're on iTunes. He's like, can I get them for free off your record label? I was like, all right. Right before we came here, he's like, Oh man, I hope he shows us a new song. I actually buy his music off iTunes because I like it. I'm like, wow, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <Whoa. laughs>of an empire my new album is uh, most of the sound design whereas in previous times probably even your remix I was using more software based synths and cr coming up with those growls and a lot of that kind of stuff and now I'm doing a lot of that through hardware which takes a longer time but I'm coming up with sounds that I couldn't even tell you how you could ever get out of software the cool thing about that I assume is no one's ever gonna recreate that sound you've you've made that yourself through hours of perseverance and trial and trepidation and just and you've found the sound, that's not somewhere stored on a bank that someone else is gonna go, that sounds cool, I'm gonna use this in my song. That's all you. I can't even recall it. So yeah, it's like, once you pull one cable here, you're pretty much boned. It's like, you're never gonna get that same sound back. For me personally, we've left the studio for and we've been stoked and then maybe a month down the line, like, I really wish we'd have tried this here, or 
I wish we hadn't have done this in this section. And I think we're all just trying really hard to make sure that doesn't happen this time. Yeah, stone unturned. I mean, and you guys have more time this time around to do this record, so you feel like you have more time to sit with the tracks and yeah. make I think them right. The environment, everything. I way think better we've as well, decided as well. Like, if we're not 100% stoked, we never want to leave a bit that's like, yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. It will work. Like, it has to be. Per it has to be. If it's going to be in the song, it has to be there. Yeah. You know, like it, the song can't live without this section. We'll argue about it. We'll we, spent, sure it you know? we spent two days. There was the most simplistic breakdown in the world in one of the songs, and we spent two days <clears> rewriting it. Two days just for. I was probably behind that computer screen for like 12 hours, like, no, 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 and just ended up scrapping the whole thing and re completely rewriting it. I was like, this is a new song now, but it's for the better, you know? There's like always this little naivety to your first record, you know, because you you're into certain things and you haven't been exposed to the music world in a big way and so you have all these like kind of um, not childish ideas but just young ideas and they've matured so much so songwriting wise from that first record to now and I think the evolution is just I don't know just you guys have become successful doing what you do best but you're also twisting that into commercial success yeah. as well which is just Great. It's maturity. It's yeah. a, it's maturity, like just as songwriting. Yeah, I listen to my first records, which I never even I don't even want to admit they exist, but same exact thing. Parts that just you never hear again, and seven minute tracks, and they don't ever repeat anything. Yeah. Don't you say a word? Because he used to listen to them. But 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 you know, over, no thanks. But <laughs> over time, you know, you start going exactly like, oh, these are the parts that really stick out. Maybe there should be more structure here, and I think it's just a maturity thing. And then, you, so you you work smarter instead of just harder. We're taking a different approach on the drums on this. Yeah. I think um, in the past it would be James sitting behind the glass and having a certain amount of time to get something done, and we would be like, "Well, let's try this. Let's try that. Okay, well, we just need to get the song done, so we'll just use that." And it wasn't like we ever really settled. I mean, of course, we made sure that the songs were badass and everything. The decisions we made were awesome. But now what we're doing is we're sitting down in front of a computer and we're trying every different combination and possibility of, of the drum fill. And once we've decided, oh man, that is just the perfect one, then we throw in the vocals into the mix and we're like, oh, that kind of clashes with that vocal part. Let's change this and make it work. And once we've done all that, now he knows what he needs to do when he goes in to play the song. And we have a much more educated idea of how how the drums need to interact with this, what the song's doing. How instrumental were you in, in, in the new vocalist, just picking out the new vocalist? Did you guys come to the table with somebody, it's or did Joe? It's actually it really, at the same time. it's so weird. Oh. Yeah, we, we found the guy that we were like, I think this is who we need to be, uh, to be making music with, this guy's great. And Joe was like, hey guys, I don't know if you've ever considered, but I think this would be a great fit. And it's like, wow, okay, yeah, the planets hmm. have confirmed. Aligned. We're still using a lot of electronic sounds in this new record, just, but just presenting them in a different way. You know, back in 2009 when we were doing it, it was tr a heavily trance based. Like, there was a lot of trance section mm -hmm. stuff. Now, I don't know. I, I, and again, like, on the last record and Reckless Runners, there was a lot more, I'd say, industrial tones and darker sounds. When I approach a remix, the first, first thing and the foremost thing is the track itself. Like, do, when I'm hearing something, what element of that song jumps out at me where I go, oh, I know exactly what to do with that. And when I actually, the first time I heard A Lesson Never Learned, it was thrown in with a batch of a few other songs, <clears throat> and I listened to them all, and there was the hook in that song that I instantly went, I'm taking that right there. So I instantly wrote back and said, this is the song I want. Got the stems and started the whole song off with that vocal hook and then built the rest of the track around it. So, you know, remixing, I never really walk into a remix having a formula. I'm not a template guy, so I can't just pull open a template in my DAW and have my drums and my bass and my synth sounds ready to go. I start from zero. So what was great is being able to get the stems, hearing a bunch of the, the gents and, the, and just like the riffs and being able to isolate those and then go, okay, well, what would I do under this? And then putting some drums, like picking the drums that I wanted and what kind of synths would match the guitar tones. You know, and it hails back to my early days of discovering electronic music, I didn't understand. One of the most bloody shows I've ever seen was a completely electronic artist, um, which was Skinny Puppy. And it was industrial music, but 
I saw more people come out of the pit bloody than I'd ever seen in any metal show. And I, I grew up in New York, man. I'd be in me New York hardcore shows all the time and metal shows. And it's a singer, a drummer, and a guy behind like eight synthesizers. But it was so dark and aggressive. I understood the energy that could translate with electronic music. And it, so it's always made sense to me that metal and electronics it never in my brain it never didn't make sense yeah. so then getting like stems for you guys mashing those up with synths like i said even like when i would play the song out live when i was kind of doing the dj thing people would instantly erupt like you'd see mosh pits at, at, at an electronic show because people feel the energy not because it's all just guitars it's a mixture of those things right. so yeah. it's always going to be that way i feel like we'll we'll listen back to this record in five years time but what were we thinking? Uh, what were we thinking? We should have done this there, you know, but that's that's the beauty of music. It's forever expanding. You're always learning, discovering new ways to put your ideas across and mm -hmm. that's why it's never that's why it never has and never will get boring. That's music will that, never, right there. Ever that's die. A, well, I think that's ultimately the path that you have to take as an artist in my opinion is you have to do what's in your heart. Yeah. So, there were a lot of people telling me, "You can't do that. You can't take these instruments and mix them with that." I was like, "Okay, I'm going to do it anyway." And if it sucks, it sucks, you know, but I've carved a whole, my whole sound from out of just doing that and making lots of mistakes.